In this edition of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about... What are we doing? I already forgot what I said talking about. Click tracks. All right. I should just read this damn thing. Okay, uh, this one we're going to talk about click tracks. And the click track stuff is, is fairly straightforward, and we'll also get into tempo tracks as well, which is a little bit more um, interesting, I guess we could say. Okay, and that's actually kind of a cool thing with all the drums. I pushed them way out here for whatever reason, um, even though I'll have a mess of automation to go through later. Okay, um, you can see here, and I think this is the transport, they call it. Um, you can call it the VCR controls. That's kind of what I call it. Um, and that's F2 uh, to get to that. Um, this thing has some useful junk in it, although I don't know. I don't really. I'm so shortcut based now. I don't use it too often. But one area I do uh, use it often is the tempo. Now this particular song has a fixed tempo of 110 uh, beats per minute with a uh, four forward time. And if we wanted to change that, we just click there and we just click there. Now because the song's already um, something halfway finished with wave files, uh, just changing the tempo gets a little bit screwy. Um, MIDI has no problem with you changing tempo. Uh, wave files don't have the ability to change tempo without um, some kind of processor uh, doing its thing. And because of that, I mean, uh, to a WAV file, it's got 44,100 samples per second. And that's going to, it's going to stay that way unless we have to shift it. And that, that creates a uh, pitch shift and then that has to be dealt with. So um, these gadgets that can, um, processors, uh, whatever you want to call them, that can um, slow down or speed up audio are actually fairly impressive because they're actually pitch shifters too. It's kind of weird. So anyway, um, so you just enter your tempo right here and then the click, as you can see, is right there or just C. Okay, and so let's just mute everything. Oops, wrong M. And then, and there it is. Two, three, four. Pretty handy. All right, simple enough. Now, under devices, or is it tra transport, metronome setup, um, we've got all kinds of options. Um, a lot of prog guys, uh, metal dudes, don't want the downbeat on four because their music's written in some crazy time signature, and it doesn't really do them any good to hear the beep every... Um, I don't know, 11 beats or, you know, I don't I don't get in all that technical uh, mumbo jumbo, but they know what they're doing. And so one thing that I often do is, uh, so right now I'm using the audio click. There's a MIDI click, but I don't have it. I could send that to um, a synth or some kind of drum machine or something if I wanted to. Or I can even send it to um, battery itself, which or any other virtual instrument within Cubase. So that could be useful for, if you really need a custom uh, click track. I don't I don't ever get too fancy. The, the audio one's fine, I mean, a million percent of the time, it seems like. So yeah, you heard me, a million percent. Okay, now one thing I have noticed, I like to keep the low always the same. I don't ever change that. But if, if these prog uh, metal dudes just want a constant beep, 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 and don't really care what the downbeat is, pushing that all the way down uh, makes it match the the mid or the the standard low uh, thing. So I'll hit OK and then let's listen to it. See, there's no way to tell what the downbeat is, and then these those guys love it. They eat that up. So that's a really smart little thing that that Cubase did there. Oops. Unlike my unsmart hitting the wrong buttons a million times. Okay. So that's really cool. And so, but generally speaking, I just keep it right there in the middle. Uh, mo most of the music I do these days, you want to hear the downbeat. That's helpful. And of course, you can adjust the level. Some guys want the the, uh, the downbeat to be highly accented, while other guys don't. So whatever, you can manipulate that stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about clicks. Either they're on or they're off. Um, the only thing is, is you often want to keep the levels really high um, because you have to fight through the music. Another thing is, is most of them, See, it's not flowing through the two bus, the stereo bus, which is my stereo out. It's, uh, oh shit. It's probably going through, you never know what I have going here. Yeah. This is something I always struggle with. The, the, the different versions of Cubase, they swap, they swap this on me. So, um, what I generally do, um, if the music's too loud, um, for the click, 
um, is turn the music down in any way I can. That generally and boost some other way. So um, let's put the drum. Let's put something in there. Actually, let's put the whole damn song going here. Okay. Is that the whole song. I guess it is. Okay. All right. The click is on right now. You can't hear it, but and we'll boost everything up. So that's a pretty easy problem to solve. Um, I did it mostly with a console, but if you had headphone amp or your monitor volume, you could do it. So it's cheating, but again, it, it's one of those things where I need to go back and learn the finer details of Cubase, but I'm too busy working to do that. So, um, and this doesn't really slow me down. So um, again, it's recommended if it's a big deal to you to learn the right way, by all means. Now, let's talk about tempo tracks because I'm already bored of click tracks. Tempo track is Cubase's way of controlling uh, changes in tempo real time. And uh, let's go ahead and hit Control T. And uh, this button probably is a device. I don't even know how to get to it. Um, again, I'm, I'm show, so shortcut um, ingrained. It's there somewhere. OK, here it is, Temp the Project Tempo Track. It might be worth it to learn what these other damn things do. Anyway, uh, in the Tempo Track, and it works just like automation does. Um, within Cubase, uh, like on a um, audio, any audio signal. So, what I'm going to do, this song kind of, I don't, I'm going to save this. It's 003 right now. I'm going to go ahead and save it as 03 junk. That way I don't tear up my, my old file. But what I'm going to do here is I want the tempo to change, let's say 105. So, we have our drums that are going to start. And to click off. All right, we got four bars there, so that's fun. Now, so what that means is 95, I want the drums to go. And then the, the, whole, the thing here, though, is tempo. Look at my mouse. Is, we can do fixed or tempo track. Now, that just screwed up everything. Since we're at 120, I mean, this is important. You guys need, will have a disaster. You got to be really like you're really careful, as if you're like on the edge of a of a cliff. Our MIDI just changed. Uh, it sped up. Was was 110, right? There, we can always go back and look. Yeah, and see. You see the shift where the edits are, like where the virus is, right here. Watch it; it'll move on us because the the bars are shorter with with a faster tempo. And see, there it goes. Only problem is, you notice this didn't change like this part. So you're, you, you can, you need to really check the manual on this. Um, I don't ever need it, so I don't do it. Um, but the manual has extensive uh, ways of explaining. And each track's got some kind of music mode or clock mode, um, musical versus linear business. And there's ways to engage that, but it, it's a pain, and there's downsides to it, and some fidelity loss because you're pitch shifting and all this stuff. So just be real, real careful with that. And it's way better to get this set up before you record any real tracks. That's that's the big one. And if you screw up with the wrong tempo, uh, don't. That's, that's been my lesson, but uh, you might be able to fight through it or just learn how to do it right. So anyway, we can solve this problem, however, I think. We go, because we only want it, we want it to be 110 until, let's just say, 89. Let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so we'll go to our tempo track. And now it should let us change this thing. So, did I say 89? Yeah, okay. Um, go there, and let's pull this thing down to... And there's probably some button where we can snap it where it'll land exactly 110. We might have to wing it. And wing it. I don't know why I thought control or shift or okay there okay I did that backwards I wanted this one over here okay I guess we're gonna learn how to do this together um, so we're going see I don't do this much so I'm I don't even know what I'm showing you blind leading them need to call you guys blind I'd rather call you deaf <laughs> okay now now we should be kind of back in business. Let's see if it stayed. Okay, that actually looked sounded pretty good. Okay, back to where I was. So these drums will be their their usual tempo. 
110, which is what I wanted to start with. Okay, we're coming up on that. But, and let's say we wanted to speed up. Uh, definitely sped up, but let's just make it crazy for you people who are deaf. That's pretty crazy, but you get the point. You can really adjust this, and you can do ramps too. And for the life of me, I can't remember what made us think that we were. And I just did this like a month ago. Anyway, oh, it's this thing. Insert curve. You can do these ramp things. Where? There we go. And so if we wanted to slow down progressively. Okay, so you get the idea there. And again, check your manual, but the click track will follow this uh, just like MIDI does. So um, if your progressive metal type dudes want to um, bring in a tempo map type thing, you just want to map out a verse of this tempo and this is this and this and this, you can do it with a click. So and you'll let me go ahead and mute the uh, everything. And let's check back to Control T or whatever that was, Project Tempo Track. You're going to hear it speed up here. I see it sped up crazy. And then it starts dragging again. And there we are. So um, that can be pretty pretty damn useful. Um, some drummers love it, some hate it. I don't know. you got to feel that one out. It's a kind of an advanced topic. But it's something that does come up. And it's nice to know it's in there, even if you, like me, forget how to work the damn thing. Okay, that covers uh, click tracks and tempo tracks.